Good morning. Welcome to the monastery. My name is Margaret Holman. Today is Palm Sunday of the Passion of the Lord, Year B. Please stand to welcome Father Patrice. gathered together in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Spirit be with you all. We take this opportunity to welcome everyone in our celebration today, and we celebrate this Palm Sunday, the beginning of the implementation of God's will for the Passion death and the resurrection of Jesus. May we take a moment to turn to your neighbor to say hello, to say welcome as part of God's family. Today we join our hearts together as we have our long readings for the passion of Jesus and I will ask you to find a place in the readings. We have all those characters. We have Jesus, we have Mary, the women who accompany Jesus. We have the apostles, we have those strong characters. Peter is there, Judah is there, the betrayer. We have the rest. We have the crowd, we have the pilot, we have the crowd. We have the chief priests and the others. Where do you find yourself? Today it's a revelation of wickedness, of evil. The coming of God's will, that God inflict all our wickedness, our evil, unto Jesus. Think of yourself and try to find where you fit. Do you fit in the place of Judah, of Pira, or the other apostles, or the women? or the pilot, or the crowd, or the chief priest. Find yourself, and we're asking God to transform us. So we begin by blessing the branches for those who carried the branch, if we can lift them up. Let us pray. Almighty ever living God, sanctify these branches with your blessings that we who follow Christ, the King of exaltation, may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him who lives and reigns forever and ever. And let us pray. Almighty ever living God, who has with an example of humility for the human race, follow the cause of our Savior, he take flesh and submit to the cross, Graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patience and suffering so as to merit a share in his resurrection. We make this prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The Lord has given me a disciple's tongue so that I may know how to reply to the wearied. 
he provides me with speech. Each morning he wakes me to hear, to listen like a disciple. The Lord has opened my ear. For my part, I made no resistance, neither did I turn away. I offered my back to those who struck me, my cheeks to those who tore at my beard. I did not cover my face against insult and spittle. The Lord comes to my help so that I am untouched by the insults. So too, I set my face like flint. I know I shall not be shamed. The word of the Lord. All who see me deride me. They curl their lips, they toss their heads. He trusted in the Lord, let him save him. Let him release him, if this is his friend. My God. Many dogs have surrounded me. A band of the wicked beset me. They tear holes in my hands and feet. I can count every one of my bones. They divided my clothing among them. They cast lots for my robe. O oh Lord, do not leave me alone. My strength, make haste to help me. I will tell of your name to my brethren and praise you where they are assembled. You who fear the Lord, give him praise. All sons of Jacob, give him glory. Revere him, Israel's sons. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. His state was divine, yet Christ Jesus did not cling to his equality with God, but emptied himself to assume the condition of a slave and became as men are, and being as all men are, he was humbler yet, even to accepting death, death on a cross. But God raised him high and gave him the name which above all others, so that all beings in the heavens, on earth and in the underworld should bend at the name of Jesus and that every tongue should acclaim Jesus Christ as Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Christ became obedient for us even to death, dying on the cross. Therefore God raised him on high and gave him a name above all other names. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. And the Lord be with you. A proclamation from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. May you be seated, please. The Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread 
were to take place in two days' time. So the chief priests and the scribes were seeking a way to arrest him by treachery and put him to death. They said, not during the festival, for fear that there may be a riot among the people. When he was in Bethany reclining at table in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came with an alabaster jar of perfumed oil, costly, genuine spikenard. She broke the alabaster jar and poured it on his head. There were some who were indignant. Why has there been this waste of perfumed oil? It could have been sold for more than 300 days' wages and the money given to the poor. They were infuriated with her. Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you make trouble for her? She has done a good thing for me. The poor you will always have with you, and whenever you wish you can do good to them. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anticipated anointing my body for burial. I mean, I say to you, wherever the gospel is proclaimed to the whole world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went off to the chief priests to hand him over to them. When they heard him, they were pleased and promised to pay him money. Then they looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, his disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? He sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man will meet you carrying a jar of water. Follow him. Wherever he enters, say to the master of the house. The teacher says, Where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large upper room furnished and ready. Make the preparation for us there. The disciples then went off, entered the city, and found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he came with the twelve, and as they reclined at table and were eating, Jesus said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to him one by one, Surely it is not I. He said to them, One of the twelve, the one who dips with me into the dish, for the Son of Man indeed goes as it is written of him, but to all the man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed, it would be better for that man if he had never been born. While they were eating, he took bread said a blessing, broke it, and gave it to them, and said, Take it, this is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, and they all drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed for many. Amen, I say to you, I shall not drink again the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink anew in the kingdom of God. Then, after singing a hymn, they went to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, All of you will have, have your faith shaken, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be dispersed. But after I have been raised up, I shall go before you into Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all should have their faith shaken, mine will not be. Then Jesus said to him, 
Amen, I say to you this very night before the cock crows, twice you'll deny me three times. But he vehemently replied, Even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And they all spoke similarly. Then they came to a place named Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter, James and John, and began to be troubled and distressed. Then he said to them, My soul is sorrowful even to death. Remain here while I keep watch. He advanced a little and fell to the ground and prayed that if it were possible the hour might pass him by. He said, Abba, Father, all things are possible to you. Take this cup away from me, but not what I will, but what you will. When he returned, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing again, he prayed, saying the same thing. Then he returned once more and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open, and they did not know how to answer him. He returned a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It is enough. The hour has come. Behold, the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. See, my betrayer is at hand. Then, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied by a crowd with swords and clubs who had come from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. His betrayer had arranged a signal with them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him and lead him away securely. He came and immediately went over to him and said, Rabbi. And he kissed him. At this they laid hands on him and arrested him. One of the bystanders drew his sword, struck the high priest's servant, and cut off his ear. Jesus said to them in reply, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day I was with you, teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me. But that scripture may be fulfilled. And they all left him and fled. Now a young man followed him wearing nothing but a linen cloth about his body. They seized him, but he left the cloth behind and ran off naked. They led Jesus away to the high priest, and all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes came together. Peter followed him at a distance into the high priest's courtyard and was seated with the guards, warming himself at the fire. The chief priests and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none. Many gave false witness against him, but their testimony did not agree. Some took the stand and testified falsely against him, alleging, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple made with hands, and within three days I will build another one, not made with hands. Even so, their testimony did not agree. The high priest rose before the assembly and questioned Jesus, saying, Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But he was silent and answered nothing. Again the high priest asked him and said to him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? Then Jesus answered, I am, and you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand 
of the power and the coming with the clouds of heaven. At that, the high priest tore his garments and said, What further need have we of witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? They all condemned him as deserving to die. Some began to spit on him. They blindfolded him and struck him and said to him, Prophesy. And the guards greeted him with blows. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the high priest's maids came along. Seeing Peter warming himself, she looked intently at him and said, You too were with the Nazarene, Jesus. But he denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you are talking about. So he went out into the outer courtyard. Then the cock crowed. The maids saw him and began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. Once again he denied it. A little later, the bystanders said to Peter once more, Surely you are one of them, for you too are a Galilean. He began to curse and swear. I do not know this man about whom you are talking. And immediately a cock crowed a second time. Then Peter remembered the word that Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will have denied me three times. He broke down and wept. As soon as morning came, the chief priests with the elders and the scribes, that is, the whole Sanhedrin, held a council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? He said to him in reply, You say so. The chief priests accused him of many things. Again, Pilate questioned him. Have you no answer? See how many things they accuse you of. Jesus gave him no further answer, so that Pilate was amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, he used to release them one prisoner whom they requested. A man called Barabbas was then in prison along with the rebels who had committed murder in a rebellion. The crowd came forward and began to ask to do for them as he was accustomed. Pilate answered, Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? For he knew that it was out of envy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have them release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate again said to them in reply, Then what do you want me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted again, Crucify him. Pilate said to them, Why, what evil has he done? They only shouted the louder, Crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas to them, and after he had Jesus scourged, handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is, the praetorium, and assembled the whole cohort. They clothed him in purple, and weaving a crown of thorns, placed it on him. They began to salute him with, Hail, King of the Jews! and kept striking his head with a reed and spitting on upon him. They knelt before him in homage, and when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him out to crucify him. They pressed into service a passerby, Simon, a Cyrian, who was coming into the country the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry the cross. They brought him to the place of Golgotha, which is translated, place of the skull. They gave him wine drugged with myrrh, but he did not take it. 
When they crucified him and divided his garments by casting lots for them to see what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, the King of the Jews. With him, they crucified two revolutionaries, one on his right and one on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, hey, you who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself by coming down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes mocked him among themselves and said, He saved others, he cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross, that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also kept abusing him. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, and at three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lema sabachthan. Which is translated, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, Look, he is calling Elijah. One of them ran, soaked a sponge with wine, put it on a reed, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see if Elijah comes to take him down. Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. The veil of the sanctuary was torn in two, from top to bottom. When the centurion who was facing him saw how he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. Also other women looking on from a distance. Among them were <coughs> Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of younger James and of Joseph and Salome. These women had followed him when he was in Galilee and ministered to him. There were also many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When it was already evening, since it was the day of preparation, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a distinguished member of council, who was himself awaiting the kingdom of God, came and courageously went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate was amazed that he was already dead. He summoned the centurion and asked him if Jesus had already died. And when he learned of it from the centurion, he gave the body to Joseph. Having bought a linen cloth, he took him down, wrapped him in the linen cloth, and laid him in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. Then he rolled a stone against the entrance to the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, watched where he was laid. The gospel, the good news for our salvation. I believe you are still alive, and uh, though we have a long reading, I believe you have found a place in the readings that we have today. Try to find yourself. It's not all about kindness, about being good. It's not all about loving. It's about the true nature of man who we are, 
the other side of man about our wickedness, our evil, our iniquities. There is nothing to hide or to cover. We don't need to go to a court to find who is right, who is wrong. It's about my nature. We move a bit from Peter, Judah, Iscariot, the crowd, and find who we are today, 2021. Where are you in this scenario? In this team, where, which position can we find you? Can we find you in the place of Jesus? Jesus who was speaking prophetically. You know, with, with that great revelation. And he began by telling them, young boys, guys, something is, is about to happen today. It is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. The guys, Jesus, what are you talking about? What's wrong with you? And it began there. And Peter is saying, I'm strong. Jesus, everybody can leave you, but I'm powerful enough to be with you. Jesus is saying, Peter, hold a bit. And what we had in the gospel. And the rest of the apostles were the saying the same thing, human nature. And when Peter was confronted, he began cursing. I guess he was telling me, what's wrong with you? Are you real with your full mind or something is wrong with you? Those are the things Peter was talking about. And the rest of the apostles, the chief priest, the pilot, despite of having that revelation, they finally betrayed Jesus. How about Judah? It's a bit interesting, eh? After taking the bread... In an instant, the devil was behind him, waiting for him. He said, finish that bread, and he entered Judah. See this war between good and evil. And both are human beings. They have a human body. For Jesus, we know that is the word made flesh, so he has the body like mine and yours. And for the devil to find an opportunity he must to enter into the human body because he can't function. That's why Judah, after he took the bread, then the devil entered him. That's why he went to betray. But Jesus had that revelation. That's why he said, Guy, finish the bread and go do what you want to do. Can we be part of the crowd? They said, do away with him that we don't need God. Can we find this in our way of life? Any attitude? Jesus was following what Isaiah said five years ago, that it was the will of God to crush him, to put all our iniquities on him. What did Jesus say at the end? Father, forgive them. They do not know what they are doing. Even the chief priests. We imagine that maybe we could be the one. But as the, at the end here, they were abusing him. So the abuse don't begin today. Where do you find yourself? Even the preacher, they had no that revelation. There is a remarkable statement Jesus said here. Eloi, Eloi, lema sabachthani, which he translates, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? This is the only instant that God departed from Jesus. Think about it. The only area that Jesus finds himself, I'm alone, God is not there. He said, Father, where are you? Before, Jesus was saying, I and the Father, we are one. But this is the time Jesus is saying, I'm alone. I'm helpless. Why? This is the time that God laid all our iniquities, the iniquities, the evil, the wickedness, the abuse of humanity on Jesus, on the cross. And God has to leave him. Why? Because God is holy and he cannot live in that circumstances. 
He can't be in Jesus no matter what. And only instant that Jesus was filthy, wicked, and all the human sins were laid upon him. And God has to leave him because God is holy. He cannot interact with the sinners and have one company with him. And that's why Jesus is saying, Father, what's, what's happening here? You depart from me? You leave me alone? He said, yes, I leave you alone. Because you have to carry the full penalty for humanity. No matter why, Paul said, he made Jesus to be sin and made you to be righteous. That's it. Not because we did anything. We didn't die on the cross, but he died for me and for you. So, brothers, we're invited now to reflect and to find our position. It's not to hide. It's not to say I'm so good, I'm good, or whatever. It's to be sincere with myself and say to God, I need you. I need your grace. I need your support in my life. I need you to heal me with my behavior, with my attitude. Things that are hide like Judah. He live in the community. But he had the first priority to get money, the, the common pool of the community and the rest of the character that we find. We are asking God can help each and every one of us in our character and our behavior. We ask him to give us that spirit of wisdom, the one that Jesus walked prophetically. Knowing that Jesus took our sins on the cross, we profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church. Since God laid all our iniquities upon Jesus, the Lamb of God, we have the courage to open our hearts with our petitions. For, for the Church, that we commend our lives to God each day, emptying ourselves of selfish desires and the need to control, allowing God to raise us to fuller life. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have been abandoned or accused unjustly, that they may know God's presence with them, have the strength to hold to the truth and find support in the Christian community. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For the leaders of government, that they recognise in Jesus, the King of the Jews, the model for leadership and follow the example of Jesus in serving those entrusted to their care. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For all people of goodwill, that every heart may reject violence and force as ways to resolve conflicts, offer support to all who have been injured and seek new means of reconciliation and healing. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For all affected by the floods along the east coast, that the rain stops and the water level falls, allowing people to begin the task of cleaning and rebuilding their lives. May they receive the support they need now and into the future. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. We pray for those who are sick and for those who have asked for our prayers. We pray for those whom God has called from this life. Sister Christine Keenan. 
and for those whose anniversaries occur at this time, Cosmo Farden. Lord, hear us. We are asking for the spirit of repentance as Peter did. After denying Jesus three times, he came to himself and wept bitterly and said, Lord, forgive me. We are asking for the grace of Jesus as this is the time as we enter to a whole week that the good Lord may transform our lives into the image and the patterns of Jesus. With this and all that have remaining at the bottom of our hearts, we ask them in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. We pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our loving Father. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O oh Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near to end, so that though we do not merit by our own deeds, yet by the sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effect of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Lift your Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accept unjust condemnation to save the guilt. His death has washed away our sins, and his resurrection he purchased our justification. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of holy holiness. Make holy therefore for these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them, like the default, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving you thanks, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving you thanks. Gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving you thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. 
Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread through the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with the Francis our Pope, Patrick our Bishop, the clergy, and all your entire family. Remember also all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that to the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, Saint Joseph, with all the blessed apostles and saints, who have pleased you through the ages, you may merit to be Christ's eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Since Jesus took all our iniquities upon the cross, we have the courage to approach God with the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us <coughs> Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as well with the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. And the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Joyfully we can share with one another that sign of peace. Now together we can proclaim the one who was slain for us from the foundation of the world, Lamb of God. Brothers and sisters, this is Jesus, the lamb that was slain as we heard in the gospel on our behalf. Blessed are we who are invited into his banquet. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof.
for the current Easter liturgy timetable and important information about the future changes to COVID-19 restrictions, please make sure you bring a copy home of the parish bulletin. There will be no mass at St. Paul's for the next two Sundays. This Monday is the clergy prayer day and the next Monday, 5th of April, is a public holiday. Thank you. And also for the Holy Thursday, they will not have the uh, morning mass here, 7 o'clock and Parkside because we'd have the mass in the evening. But also because of the government protocol of uh, COVID restriction, uh, there is a possibility to allow to have the full capacity from next week, but with the condition that everyone will come with a mask. So we are asking at least if you can have some copy with you and uh, we'll see how the things will be. Thank you. Let us pray. <coughs> Nourished with this sacred gift, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son, you have brought us the hope for what we believe. So by his resurrection, you may lead us to eternal life. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. And the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless and protect you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. May you all remain in the peace of Christ. Thank you.